Hi folks, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video we're going to look at some Laplace transform properties, in particular the time delay. This is a pretty important property for control system analysis, because a lot of times we'll want to understand how our closed loop system responds to signals that can be constructed from combinations of other core signals, like a couple steps that can be used to create a pulse. Another important reason for studying time delays in terms of feedback control systems is oftentimes they crop up. So for instance, if you're measuring some sensed quantity that you use in the feedback loop and there's a time delay associated with it, perhaps in the time it takes to transmit that signal wirelessly from wherever you're measuring it to the controller, that time delay needs to be taken into consideration when designing the control system. If the time delays are too large, you can actually drive the system unstable. So by the end of this video, what you should be able to do is look at a function and determine if it's a time delayed quantity or not. And then of course take the Laplace transform of it. I'm also going to be doing a lot of sketching because it's really important to be able to look at a function, especially a time delayed function, and start to have a mental image of what it looks like. It's actually pretty easy to recognize a time delayed function. If you're staring at some function of t, and everywhere where you would normally see a t, it's replaced by t minus tau, where tau is some you know, number of five, seven, etc., which represents the time delay, then you've got a time delayed function. So we'll look at a few examples, and these are all just parabolas where I've incorporated different shifts with the t minus 3 term. The first one is just a parabola multiplied by a step where the step has the effect of annihilating the function for negative time. The second one has the t squared replaced with t minus 3 squared, and that certainly shifts the parabola over to the right by 3 seconds. But because the step kicks on at t equals 0, the annihilation of the function happens for t less than 0. So we're picking up part of the parabola that you would normally see for negative time. The last one, of course, is a straight up pure time delay. The signal that we had in equation 1 is just shifted by 3 seconds. And every occurrence of t in equation 1 is just replaced with t minus 3. Now we'll look at a few properties of the time delay. First off, it's a linear phenomenon, so superposition holds. Item 2 is pretty much what I was describing on the previous slide, just written in a slightly different way. Given some function f that's not delayed in time, and let's say you want to create a version of it that is shifted in time by tau seconds, just replace a recurrence of t with t minus tau. And don't forget to multiply that function by the unit step also shifted in time by tau seconds. That will annihilate the function for t less than tau. And here's the important part from a Laplace standpoint. It goes like this. If you have a time delayed function and you need to take the Laplace transform of it, first you have to back out what the undelayed function is. So just replace all those t minus taus with t's, you'll have the undelayed version, and then take the Laplace transform of it and simply multiply by e to the negative tau s. So here's the first example. It's not a Laplace transform, it's just an exercise in writing a time delayed function. So w of t is not delayed in time, and we just want to delay it by 7 seconds, but also sketch it. And here's g that is delayed in time, just replacing t with t minus 7. Not, not any big deal. Here's the sketch of it, and it's a very classic time delay looking thing. It's 0 all the way up until 7 seconds, and then it kicks into gear. Now I'm going to be flipping into MATLAB every once in a while, and what we'll do is use MATLAB to plot this thing. Most of you have experience with plotting things in MATLAB, but we're going to take maybe just a slight twist to it that you might find entertaining. So here's the, the time vector. Now we fill out the expression g, but we're going to do an interesting thing to get that time shift of the step function in there. So another name for the step function is the Heaviside function, and that's the terminology the MATLAB uses. And I'll switch to MATLAB in just a second so you can see how this works. Then of course we can plot this thing. If you're interested in this sort of thing, check out the story of Oliver Heaviside. He was born in the mid-1800s, I think 1840, and had just an amazing life. I'm just going to replicate pretty much what we saw on the previous slide. And this may take just a minute to type out, so I'll probably fast forward through this in the uh, video.
And there we go, a nice little time delayed function. Great, so let's go on to example two. So finally, we're going to take a Laplace transform. Let's sketch out g of t and then go ahead and do the Laplace transform. It's just time delayed by 0.1 seconds. If you take a look at this function, you can see that every occurrence of t is really a t minus 0.1. And so now we have to back out from this the undelayed function. And we get this from which we can go to a Laplace transform table and write out the Laplace transform of f of t, the undelayed function. And then to get the Laplace transform of the delayed function, it's just the same thing, but multiplied by e to the negative 0.1s. And we can write that like so. Now we're going to play around with this in MATLAB again, but not from a numeric standpoint, but instead from a symbolic standpoint. So we define a couple symbolic variables, s and t, fill out f of t with our buddy, the Heaviside function, and then take the Laplace transform of it. Now, once you do that, it's going to be in a rather strange form, so you'll need to simplify that so that it looks like the same form that we have in the red box. And there we go. This should look just like the expression we had on the previous page in the red box. It's written, I'm using the, the pretty command so that we can see it in the same way that I wrote it before. And here we are in example three. Now you look at this function and it doesn't look like a time delayed function because every occurrence of t is not a t minus one. So it's not a pure time delay. Here's what it looks like. It's this parabolic thing again where it is annihilated for time less than zero because of the unit step that kicks in at time equals zero. But we can still take the Laplace transform of it. We just have to multiply out the t minus one squared and go through the normal process of the Laplace transform. Notice there's no e to the negative s's in there because it's not a time delay function. Let's have a look at this in MATLAB. And I was able to coerce it into the same form that we had on the previous page. Moving on to example number four, we have another function that doesn't look like a time delayed function because you can see a t and a t minus one argument in the step. But let's have a look at this thing. There's the ramp part, the t. Here's the unit step delayed in time by one second. And when you multiply those two functions together, this is what you get. And we have to take the Laplace transform of this puppy. So let's do it. What we're going to do is use a little trick. We're going to take the original p of t, then I'm going to subtract and add a unit step to it. And when I do this adding and subtracting a step to the function, I can write p in this form. And now it's actually starting to look like a time delayed quantity. I can take the Laplace transform of it. I get this. Because both terms are multiplied by e to the negative s, it certainly is actually a time delayed function. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this in MATLAB also. Beautiful. And the last example. Here we're going to make a pulse function that has amplitude of six newton meters. It's a torque, I guess. It's gonna start at two seconds and have a duration of three seconds. So there is our lovely pulse. And now we just have to write it out mathematically in the time domain. We have a couple of steps, one positive, one negative, both shifted in time a little bit. And so then we can write out the Laplace transform of it. And I could reorganize that a little bit and I get this. And we can certainly do this in MATLAB. And there we go. 
To summarize, we just looked at a few properties associated with time delays and especially related to the Laplace transform and did a lot of sketching along the way and a lot of MATLAB. So hopefully you'll find this some use if you're studying time delays. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.